Hi guys, today we're going to be talking about device provisioning service on Azure for IoT devices. Now this is an interesting service because it allows us to create a scalable architecture for having multiple IoT hubs, then I can use some logic to assign devices to those given IoT hubs that are associated with my device provisioning service. And the way this works is basically by registering a device provisioning service in Azure, then connecting a bunch of IoT hubs to that, then through some logic, I can then assign these devices that are coming online and connecting that device provisioning service to the appropriate IoT hub. Now, there's a lot of ways you can do that. The point of this video is not to get into the weeds of like how you can uh, kind of sort those out, but rather how you can use DPS and how it works uh, architecturally. And then we'll just do a brief demo on how you can take a device, spin it up, connect it to a DPS, then ultimately end up with something that's connected to an IoT hub instance. So let's look at how a DPS works. And this obviously starts with a device provisioning service, and you need an IoT hub associated with that. Now, the association between these two has to be brokered before we can actually even uh, assign credentials to a device. So I need to create some kind of registration on the device provisioning service and associate one or more IoT hubs with it. And then as part of that process, I can then uh, create the credentials that are needed to put on devices. So as part of the manufacturing process, I'm gonna be building a device and installing software on that device. And part of that software is gonna be some kind of client that can talk to the device provisioning service. In order to talk to the device provisioning service, I also need to install the credentials to talk to that device provisioning service. So the, the installation process is going to go to the device provisioning service, get some kind of key, put that uh, into the storage on the device, and then the device is going to be ready to ship. So that part is typically called claiming, and sometimes it might be called something else, but it's basically a pre-shipping process that installs the software and then the, the, the credentials for the device provisioning service. So once that's done, the device is ready to ship, and then it ships to wherever it's going to be installed. And that could be any number of different places. It could be something that's more commercially oriented. So this was bought at an electronics store or some other kind of retail outlet. And it's a small device, or it could be industrial IoT, something that's going to be installed on a factory floor. It could be medical IoT, something that's going to be installed in a hospital or a doctor's clinic. Whatever it might be, you're going to have some kind of device. It's going to be installed and it's going to be connected to a network. That network could be Ethernet, it could be Wi Fi, it could be cellular. It's going to have a network connection. And the device already knows the endpoint for the device provisioning service because that was installed as part of the manufacturing process, as when also when the key was installed. So it knows what to connect to first whenever the device fires up for the first time and it's going through the onboarding process. Now, the onboarding process could be done. Um, by a technician or the end user or someone else. But in any case, at some point, it's going to connect to the device provisioning service with the credentials that were installed on the device. It's not going to actually submit the key or the certificate. It's going to use that to sign something. And uh, the signing process is basically getting some metadata from the device and then using the key or the certificate to sign that. And then whenever that goes across the wire, and the device provisioning service sees that request, it's going to check out the signature. And if it matches uh, based on the metadata, the signed signature matches the one that the device uh, submitted, then it knows that it's authenticated. And then it says, okay, I can use this device with an IoT hub. Now the device provisioning service is then going to invoke whatever logic it needs to choose, needs to choose an IoT hub. Now that could be round robin, it could just be a single IoT hub. It could be any number of schemes. That's really uh, not the important part, but basically the device provisioning service is going to choose an IoT hub. And then when it chooses that IoT hub, it's going to assign the device to that IoT hub. So it's going to register that device with that IoT hub. It's going to uh, put it into the devices that are managed by that IoT hub. And then it's going to get the credentials from that IoT hub to connect um, to that IoT hub for the device. Now, the IoT hub at this point doesn't trust the uh, device just yet until it is assigned by the device provisioning service. But once the device provisioning service has those credentials and the endpoint, it can send it down to the device. And the device now has what it needs to connect to the IoT hub. And um, now the device will then take the endpoint and the IoT credentials that it has for the IoT hub and connect to that IoT hub and, and begin the process of 
of sending telemetry and receiving commands and doing all that kind of stuff that a device does once it's connected to an IoT hub. Now, the device provisioning service itself is uh, out of the way at that point. But if a device ever needed to re-register uh, for some reason, basically a factory reset or something like that, then you could just repeat the process. Or in the event that you end up removing the device, you revoke its credentials or something like that, it needs to repeat that process. Again, it's the same process. You just basically submit a request to the device provisioning service. It, it registers the device with an IoT hub, and then it sends the credentials uh, from the IoT hub back down to the device, and the device connects back to that IoT hub with those credentials. So I'm here in the Azure portal. I'm going to go ahead and create a resource group here. Well, I'll create a resource and create a resource group at the same time. So I'm going to go down here to Internet of Things. And then over here, um, I can create in this particular grouping here. I, I should have the ability to create an IoT device provisioning service right here. Now, I need to just give it some information. So I'm going to give it uh, create a new one. A new uh, resource group right here called DPS Demo. And then... I'm going to come down here and give it an instance name. I'll call it DPS Demo uh, Blaze. So it's unique. And then I can pick a region. So I'm going to use US East. And the, the rest of this, I can pretty much just take the defaults on. And uh, this will then create the device provisioning service. So I'm going to go ahead and create that. And then while that's creating, I'm going to come back over here to the same resource group. And I'm going to create uh, an IoT hub too. And then I can associate those two together. So I'm going to type in IoT Hub here and um, go ahead and create one of these. And uh, the IoT Hub is pretty straightforward. I'm going to put it in the same region. So I'm going to, that was, that's done now. I'm going to call it Blaze IoT Hub uh, for the name. Uh, or let's call it IoT Hub Blaze. I think I'm using that one for something else. And um, it's in the same resource group, same region. I'm going to take the, the defaults on all of the uh, networking. And an S1 should be fine for this. And I'm going to turn off IoT Defender. Don't need tags. I'm going to review and create. And go ahead and create this resource. And we'll come back once that finishes. So that's done now. Let's go back to our resource group right here. And you can see that I have uh, my IoT Hub right here. And here's my device provisioning service. So in my IoT uh, Hub, I haven't had any, I don't have any devices registered just yet. So to get the devices connected, to that IoT hub, I need to set it up, them up through this device provisioning service here. So I'm going to use uh, managed enrollments for this. Now, the manager um, allocation policies right here are basically the kinds of policies that you can use to assign an IoT hub to a device. And it's got three of these that are just kind of the out-of-box experience. There's actually a fourth one you can use, and that's to use an Azure function, and then you can add logic to it. Um, we're going to use evenly weighted dis distribution or lowest latency is just basically the fastest one. This is going to be you know, setting the default one. Um, and this one, evenly weighted di distribution basically means that it's just going to round robin them against you know whichever IoT hub is the most um, underutilized. Um, and then um, the lowest latency is going to try to connect it to the fastest one it can. So with that in mind, these are the, the allocation policies. Now, um, the enrollments are right here, and you can do an individual enrollment, which is basically a single device, and you can do one-off devices using this. Uh, the majority of devices are probably gonna come through an enrollment group, which allows you to have any number of arbitrary devices. As long as they have the certificate or the key, they, they will get connected to the enrollment group. So I'm gonna use um, a, an enrollment group called DPS Demo 1 here. I'm gonna use a symmetric key here, and it's gonna generate the key for me. And it's not an IoT Edge device, so um, that's um, I'm just going to say no, it's not. This is not for IoT Edge devices, and uh, this is the the assigned de uh, device hubs right here, and this is the the policy. And I'm going to select the IoT that um, one I'm going to link to. So I need to link it to that hub that I created, and it's going to basically just look for uh, the the devices that I have that rather the IT hubs that I have. And this is the one I just created for this demo. And then I'm going to associate this IOT hub with this device provisioning service. And so once I have that done, um, I can now use this, um, device prov uh, provisioning service with this IOT hub. Now I can add multiple IOT hubs here. If I, if I so choose, I could link another hub and then I would just 
choose those, I would select them. Now, uh, as part of this, you can also do a uh, initial device twin that goes with it. So the device twinning is basically kind of like configuration data, state data. There's a lot of things you can put into a twin, but this is basically the initial twin that you want to use. Tagging is important for updates and other and sorting and other kinds of things for devices and that gets stored. And then the properties are desired properties for the devices it can be like configuration data um, that you want to use whenever the device comes online, it's gonna get the twin and then you can uh, then use that as a way to configure devices. So um, once you have this all set up, you can just hit save. And then that's gonna go ahead and create this group. Now, as part of that, it's going to create a key which I'm going to be interested in. So I can see the key right here and copy it. So now that I've got my enrollment group set up, I'm going to go actually go and provision a sample device uh, or device simulator rather uh, to use this particular IOT hub and device provisioning service. So that's pretty straightforward. Um, but I, I'm going to have to leave this up because I'm going to need this key and a couple other things off of this as part of that setup. So now I need to configure my device using the settings from the DPS. Um, and this is where I'm going to be doing that is in this settings file right here. Now this is using the device code that's in this particular file. This is set up as a device simulator, uh, but I can use this um, simulator to show you how this works. It doesn't really matter at this point that I don't have, to, I don't need hardware connected to this. In any case, I need, basically I need to set up a couple of different variables. I need to set up this provisioning host, the ID scope and the symmetric key. And this registration ID is used as part of that process as well. So whenever the actual device comes online, I need to set this uh, variables right here. And I'm, this is going to read this file and then it's going to have the client code connect to the DPS. So uh, once I have that all plumbed, I can then run this. But to get that information, I need to come back over here to my um, DPS service on Azure. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this primary key right here. And that's going to go into this settings file. Now, the ID scope and the vision host are on the, uh, the actual uh, overview for this particular resource right here. So if I come back over here to uh, this, I can, I can copy the service endpoint. And that is the provisioning host right here. And this is the ID scope right here. Now I can save that file off and now I've got everything I need. So I've got these two pieces of information. I've got the symmetric key in there and then I've got my registration ID. Now um, I can run this now and it should work. But before I do this, I do want to look at this IoT hub instance one more time to show you that there is currently no device in this. So if I come over to my devices and look at this, there's currently no devices. So you, it should say there are no devices to display. We should see device two in here <coughs> once this process is done. So let's go ahead and run this. I'm going to open up a command prompt right here and I'm going to run a Node.js application. So I can just run node uh, device.js. And this will start up this, this whole thing. It's going to detect that I'm using a DPS and it should see the um, the output from the device provisioning service right here. So we can see the uh, registration succeeded. It was assigned to this IoT hub. The device ID is device two. And then there is the twinning data that it got from the IoT, um, from the device provisioning service, as well as the twinning data that was added to the device once it was a part of the IoT hub. And then it started uh, pretty much sending data right away. And so the um, device was able to register itself and it was uh, up and running until I stopped it. And so um, when I started again, it's not going to re-register itself. It's just basically going to um, keep running and it should start to report telemetry. And so now it's reporting telemetry every five seconds. So it's basically just basically creating, reading uh, some fake data about the, the memory use, CPU temp, that kind of thing. Um, and then reporting that back up to the IoT hub. So let's go back over to the IoT hub and we should see our device in here now. And there's device two. And if we see our, um, we should be able to see some twinning data down here too, uh, as well. So if I go to device twin and this was desired, there, there's nothing here. And this is just the reported twinning data. It's, it's reporting back the polling frequency, which was a, a piece of metadata I had. But you can see now that I have a device connected to my IoT hub by way of a device provisioning service on Azure.